most people watching do know you. We've had you on the program many times. I see you all over. But I'm not sure that everybody knows you. And you have an amazing story. Just briefly, you went from Islamic terrorist to born-again believer who loves Israel and the Jewish people. That's pretty amazing. Oh, well, my mother was American, Christian. My father was Muslim, lived in the Middle East. I was born in Bethlehem, a little village that you guys sing about once a year and forget about us <laughs> for the rest of the year. And uh, I grew up in Bethlehem and in Israel. So I breathed the air of Israel. Uh, and I, uh, you know, was raised to hate uh, the Jews, hate America. And whoever says that's not true, they, that's exactly what they teach in those schools. And so growing up in the schools in the Middle East, it really creates a terrorist. Uh, the Palestinian areas is probably the hub of all, you know, top-notch terrorism in the entire uh, world. I have first cousins who are terrorists. I have mastermind of a suicide bombing, suicide bombing operation. Uh, I got another cousin who was shot in, in his way to Ben Yehuda Street to plant a bomb. Of course, I did my first operation when I was 16 years old. I planted a bomb, you know, and uh, it exploded. No one was hurt. And so I, uh, 1993, uh, my life took a turn. I wanted to convert my wife, Maria, to Islam. Uh, it's a duty of every Muslim male to convert his non-Muslim wife to Islam. In that process, my wife gave me some challenges. Uh, she said, you know, do you always claim things about a book you never really read or studied? That means the Bible, because I made claims about the Bible. So you never really studied the Bible. So I said, for a woman, you're pretty smart. <laughs> and I bought a Bible, began to read it. And right there from Genesis, really what I found out that what's the antithesis of what's in the Bible was Islam, you know. In other words, the spirit of Antichrist, if you look at the Bible, denies the Father and the Son. So as a Muslim, we denied the Trinity. Uh, we denied the crucifixion. Everything that is holy, and precious in the Bible was made unholy in the Quran and in Islam. And so I began to see how could God manufacture many religions? It can't be possible. So that whole study ended up with me finding out that, uh, you know, God have ordained and spoken the truth from the beginning as in Isaiah. For I am God, there is no other. I am God, there is none like me. For telling the end from the beginning. You know, it's not just 8,000 verses in prophetic uh, verses in the Bible. The whole Bible was prophetic. So seeing everything from the names, Bethlehem, where he was born, everything was prophetic all the way to Revelations, was talking about really the struggle between good and evil, between God and Lucifer. And the whole thing is so complex, but it just took me a year. I couldn't put the book down. And I ended up becoming a believer. After an argument with my wife, Maria, I learned in America the guy hits the couch I was sitting down three o'clock in the morning in the couch she won <laughs> she won and I, I said won. I said you know it's either she's right and I'm wrong how could she be right and I'm wrong she's a woman I'm a man <laughs> you know I had to end, end up end up confessing that I was wrong and uh, she told me a month later you're not the husband that I've known I said do you want the old husband she says no I like the new one a lot better Praise thank God. you very much The Arab Spring, what they're calling the Arab Spring, uh, Mubarak being overthrown, uh, uh, a, a um, success for those that desire true democracy in the world. That's not really the case, is Absolutely it? Absolutely not. We've seen uh, Egypt. Uh, Egypt is gone. Libya is gone. Tunisia is gone. I mean, I know uh, of Tunisia's... Uh, uh, Nahda movement from the years I was in Chicago. I mean, there was... Rashad al-Ghanoushi, he was a Muslim brotherhood, everybody knows that. Egypt, we've seen Egypt. I mean, they were not showing on the news what really was going on in Egypt. Tell us what really was going on, how this all was orchestrated. I mean, you, you had a, a secular so-called movement. And then uh, uh, on Friday prayer, the Muslim brotherhood began their movement. And it was during that Friday after the prayer when you had the real revolution. We're talking about a radical Islamic group that was that was. Uh, banned from Egypt in 1922 and was responsible for killing, for assassinating Sadat because of his Absolutely. plans for peace treaty with it's, Israel. It's banned all over the Middle East. It was banned all over, except America. It's not banned. It's banned, it's banned throughout the Middle East. In fact, uh, Sheikh Karadawi, well, the, these, these spirit, 
the spear leader of the, the spirit, you know, the, 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 the head and the brain of the Muslim Brotherhood is really Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi. He took the stage on Victory Day uh, in, 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 in Tahrir Square. And how many Americans watched what happened in Egypt? No, no, nobody. Nobody showed two million Egyptians in Tahrir Square crying out, Al-Quds Raheen Shuhada' bil Malayin, English. To Jerusalem we march, martyrs by the millions. To Jerusalem we march, that's from the Bible by the way, Zechariah. Jerusalem will be, what, a trembling cup to all who, surrounding nations. And so uh, you had uh, uh, Wa'il Ghunim. Wa'il Ghunim was the Twitter boy. Everybody was talking about on Fox and CNN and how this is a secular revolution in right. Egypt. What happened on Victory Day? He was thrown out of the stage. Who took the stage and spoke on Victory Day in Egypt? It was none other than the spearhead of the Muslim Brotherhood, Sheikh Yusuf Al-Qaradawi. So, so you, were, you were talking to me at lunch, and I forgot the word in Arabic. But this, this idea, the strategy, the Maruna, peak, Maruna the yes. end is the same, to dom the dominance of Sharia law throughout the world. But the strategy is different. Talk about this. You know, I mean, the question people need to ask themselves, what, what happened? Has Al-Qaeda, has the Muslim Brotherhood, has the leopard shed its spots all of a sudden? All of a sudden, they're all peaceful. What's going on? What's going on was a plan from 1989, December, in fact, in the U.S., in which the spirit leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi, met with other Muslim Brotherhood in the United States of America, and they decided to begin a movement and a teaching and a new doctrine called Muruna, which means how to be uh, flexible, flexibility in Islam. In fact, I read a quote of what Muruna is. Uh, many Americans heard of taqiyya wal kitman, how to defend the faith how to cover the faith, mm -hmm. how to smile in the face of your enemy while you harbor inner animosity towards them. In other words, put a different face. And it's this a is worst ploy. Absolutely. Blinded. And Mur Muruna is part of Islam. Uh, and so Qaradawi says, the, he gives it uh, names, doctrine of balance. This is what doctrine of balance within Muruna states. Uh, look what he says, to balance between good and evil. In other words, Muslims need to do evil. How can they do evil and be forgiven? For evil is a sin. To balance between good and evil, and if they conflict with each other, we make priority as to when we put ahead evil for the sake of good. In other words, you can do evil things, but it's for the sake of good. The way the U.S. looks at things, as they look at the lesser of the two evils, at this moment, they're thinking, okay, what's happened in the Middle East? Uh, Tunisia has become a uh, Sharia institution now. It's going to become all Islamized. Uh, Libya, Muammar Qadhafi is no more. Things I've said in your program that will happen years ago and already happened. Uh, Egypt is turning to Islam Islamic. But the West is thinking, well, which one do we prefer? Iran's fiery brand of Islam or a moderate Islamic government in the Middle East? Turkey being so-called moderate but they're not moderate at all. All what happened was that the Islamists learn from the experiment of Al-Qaeda. Osama bin Laden is no more. They learn from the experiment of Iran. You see, cyber rattling, nuclear. They said, ah, we, we need to gain the West first. This is Muruna. You have to be stealth to gain the power to topple all the governments throughout the Middle East. Then we can proclaim a caliphate. The proclamation of an Islamic caliphate is part of the system. Israel is in great danger. But I'm not worried about Israel. Yes, it's in a great danger. But we keep forgetting about the most important element in the Bible, God. God is in the side of Israel. Uh, Iran will gain its nuclear, no question. In fact, I've won this gentle... Wait, say that again because that's pretty... They could launch them against Israel, but remember, the Israelis have the aero missile. It could meet any missile coming from Iran midway over on top of Saudi Arabia. Ah. And if you look at the Bible, remember, the harlot is destroyed by two entities, by my, the people of my, my, the hand of my people, Israel. And then you have in Isaiah 21, arise, O Elam, to destroy what? Arabia. Elam is Iran. Persia will destroy Arabia. I believe Arabia is the harlot of Babylon. 
if you look at the Bible, when you read Babylon in the Bible, all the names of the cities, entities, regions within those Babylon in the Bible, you will never find any ancient name of any Babylonian city. There is no mention of Kalna, Sumer, Aqad, Babel, Erech. Every single vicinity is in Arabia. The burden against Duma, Duma is in Arabia. The burden against the Didan, uh, Qidar, those are all in Arabia. It's born from Babylon. That's why it's called the daughter of Babylon. We need to focus on Saudi Arabia because it is mentioned heavily in the okay, Bible. Okay, so now we're shifting into Bible prophecy. And I, I think that the, uh, the mainstream view for many, many years has been a revived Roman Empire, yes. uh, ten nation confederacy, uh, revived Roman Empire that eventually the the Antichrist emerges from. Now you don't you see something very very different in Scripture. Jewish people, when you go to synagogues, have to be amazed uh, to 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 hear a former terrorist that now actually is saying publicly Israel has a right, the Jewish people have a right to this land, according to the Word of Absolutely. God. Absolutely, I ended up speaking to more Jews than Paul. Literally, uh, and I'm warning them what's going to happen. I mean, I'm warning them. I mean, I have been telling them for years what's going to happen. I remember the days when I said, Turkey will arise as an enemy of the state of Israel. They were laughing at me. Uh, it was at that time, is, uh, Turkey was a very good Turkey friend. Turkey was a good friend of Israel. Buying lots of water and Absolutely. lots of trade, it's changed. Absolutely, but I read the Bible. I know where, it, where that is. And now they're asking, you know, how did you know? I said, I stole the material from your grandfathers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. the end time scenario that you see taking shape in the Middle East. Look, Jonathan, it's not the EU. What we've seen going on in the Middle East is exactly what we shared years ago on your program. North Africa will fall. Egypt will fall. It's very difficult for proponents of the European Union to argue these arguments that I'm about to give. Number one, all the verses in the Bible, no exception, all of them, which literal names of nations are mentioned, all of them are Islamic, that the Bible deals with. Any burden against any country is against Muslim countries, even though Rome is mentioned about 15, 16 times in the Bible, not once in destruction. Also, all the verses in the Bible where Christ fights, how many times did I go to American churches and ask them, the Lord comes riding in a swift cloud, and where is he going? Nobody knows. Isaiah 19, the Lord comes riding in a swift cloud and is going into Egypt. This is how me and Joel Richardson knew Egypt is going to be a turmoil. There's going to be civil war in Egypt, 2012, 2013. You're going to see civil war beginning in Egypt between Salafi Muslims, Muslim Brotherhood. There's going to be the tremendous butchering of the Copts in Egypt, okay? Mm. Uh, Christ, he comes from Lebanon too, you know, Isaiah chapter 10. Lebanon shall fall by the mighty one. Uh, even when the cry to, to Christ to come to Egypt, the believers cry out to Christ to come to Egypt to help them, and God will send them a savior and a mighty one. That's the Messiah. When was the last time you had a Sunday school? Today we'll be discussing how the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come fight the Muslims in Egypt and rescue the Copts. It doesn't exist, but it is there. It's all over the Bible. Uh, it, if you look at the allegories, you know, even the allegories, uh, it, Revelation 13, it's the body of a leopard. There is no scholar in the world that would say the leopard is Rome. The leopard is Greece. In fact, Christ goes fights in Greece. Well, are we saying Greece, Athens? No. I will set your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece. Uh, that's uh, Zechariah chapter 9, 13. Uh, Ionia is in Turkey. Turkey today is Greece. When the Bible talked about the coming Antiochus, and he says he comes from Syria. Well, he didn't. You know, they said he comes from Greece. I'm sorry. He didn't come from Athens or Cyprus. He came from Syria. Antiochus. There's prophecies about Antiochus. He comes from the Grecian Empire, right? And that's pretty clear. He came from Syria. Well, Syria was part of the Grecian Empire. We're making Empire. the mistake of looking at the modern borders. Absolutely. You, modern names, modern borders. When it says Ethiopia, they think that's Christian Ethiopia. No. Kush is Sudan and Somalia, south of Egypt. Look at the Angar Bible Dictionary. Uh, you know, it's not Abyssinia, it's Kush. 
Uh, so we have to understand the geography of the times that the Bible was written. And also God is very geographic. Uh, you know, it says Yavan doesn't mean Yavan and his children and the Europeans. It means, you know, Ionia, Yavan, uh, and that's in, in Turkey. So Turkey plays a growing role. Jesus said I, I want you to go back to something. I want to go back to something we talked about before. The prophecy of, of, a, of a recovery from a head wound, which we've looked at traditionally as an individual i know john f kennedy who was going to suddenly reappear did he appear? surviving from the head from the fatal head wound in dallas y you have a different interpretation everybody who named the antichrist was wrong everybody so if they're all wrong these so-called scholars why do you trust them still you know the head wound is regarding an empire a head is an empire we go back to daniel chapter 2 the stone became a great mountain seven mountains they are those are not the hills of Vatican. If they are, when, when did five hills fell? Five have fallen, the kings with their kingdoms. It's number seven. And if you, you know, it's a long interpretation, but God's war on terror talks about these kingdoms. Egypt, Assyria, uh, Babylonia, Persia, uh, Greece, Rome, number six, number seven. Who took the mantle from the Roman Empire? Turkey, Muhammad II. And uh, let's, let, let's think about what Jesus said. He says, Pergamus, Thou art the seat of Satan. The seat of the Antichrist is in Pergamus. Who said that? It, Jesus. Do we ignore Jesus and we listen to prophecy buffs? Uh, that's what drives me crazy about prophecy buffs today. But in fact, Western scholars of Bible prophecy didn't believe what the buffs are saying today. You know, you look at Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry says, well, you know, there's four interpretations to the little horn. Some say Seleucid. Uh, some say uh, it is Rome. Some say it is Turkey. Turkey. Let's wait and see because prophecy have multiple fulfillments. We must give God the latitude to what he was trying to tell us. I don't think most people know Turkey was the center of the caliphate. It was, it was the the center of the Muslim world. Absolutely. This was the head. That's what was During wounded. the Ottoman Empire. You removed the And Islam. they ruled Israel until 1917. Yes. yes, in fact, they're right. It's the Pope. It's not the Christian Pope. It's the Muslim Pope. A caliph is, a mm. pa is, is, is literally the representation of Muhammad on earth. So Turkey recovers. Recovers. From the, from the head wound inflicted Absolutely. by the, and, by and the by British peace, Empire. And by peace, he will deceive many. They will use secular, peaceful Islam. That's what we have to be careful of. We have to be more careful of secular Islam than we are careful of Al-Qaeda style Islam because it's the same Islam. Question, what is the difference between, let's see, Anwar Awlaki, okay, and Faisal... Explain who he is, by the way. I don't... Anwar Awlaki is a terrorist who urged Nadal Malik Hassan to kill uh, uh, how many Americans at uh, Fort Hood, okay? He's a terrorist, uh, Osama bin Laden. What's the difference between these guys and Faisal Abdel Rauf, the man behind the Ground Zero Mosque, who wanted to build a mosque by Ground Zero. He's very respected in the political arena. He's a secular, peaceful Muslim. The difference is simply the means. Faisal Abdel Rauf in the Arabic says, we want America to become what? Sharia compliant. That's not my term. He even coined the term. America must become Sharia compliant, but we must do it through stealth. You must do it through Maruna. Maruna. We talked about that briefly. It's a strategy, right? Absolutely. It's a strategy that allows what's un what's not allowed in Islam for in Shari under Sharia law right. to, to to accomplish a, by a, peace. A, an you end. will deceive many by false peace. You know. Uh, in other words, uh, we come in peace. Well, when see... they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come. It's it's about false peace. Where do you, where do you see America? Uh, coming into f into Bible prophecy? That's a great question. Turkey is the second largest army in NATO. Americans don't understand. He says Turkey. You know, what's this country, Turkey? Second largest army in NATO. Larger than the army of Great Britain, France, and Germany combined. They Anybody know that, by the way? I didn't. Yeah. Obama is giving Turkey 100 F-35s, courtesy of President Obama, which will make your air superiority in the region very weak. Now, America is number one, Turkey is number two in NATO, in the, as far as the army, okay? Uh, where America fits is interesting. People ignore where America is in the Bible. In Daniel chapter 11, the Antichrist, he declares war on the strongest fortresses, the strongest military might in the world. He will declare war against it. 
you might think he will win. No, Ezekiel 28 tells us the most terrible of the nation will come against him. Terrible doesn't mean ugly, awful. It means terrible in battle. The most powerful of the nations will come against him. Those nations, the Bible says, will take him and will throw him into the pit. In other words, what America's position will be exactly as it was in Germany, exactly as it was with Japan, exactly as it was with uh, the Iraqi, uh, what's his name? Uh, Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein, who brought him to justice? It was America. Noriega, who brought him to justice? The same thing is going to happen. God's going to use those nations. We keep forgetting when we read the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem. But what happens afterwards? Continue in the text, Micah 5. Then we will raise against him, who? The Assyrian, the Antichrist, who comes against Israel, seven shepherds, seven allies versus seven enemy. Remember, ten horns, three are plucked from the beast. There will be seven kings fighting against seven kings. Righteous ones versus unrighteous ones. That's the Antichrist. So that's the bottom line. It's an alliance of nations that will fight with Israel, that God will finally bring and will restore from the nation. So you see a, a U, the U.S. remaining strong militarily? Absolutely. I, I, scripturally? Absolutely. Uh, talk about Iran and all this. Iran plays a role in all this. You, you Iran, said earlier that you believe that Iran will succeed in developing nuclear weapons. Absolutely. They will succeed in, because, look, we can't forget the importance of Iran here. I mean, if you look at uh, Revelation 13, uh, the feet of a bear. The bear is Medo-Persia. The bear rises on one side. Well, wait a minute. Medo-Persia. Medo was Kurdistan, the Kurds. Persia was Iran. And let's not forget, you know, there's no longer media. Today there's Persia. The bear rises on one side. One of them will arise in the end. Let's not forget, Turkey and Iran have a lot in common. People forget. The religious institution of Iran are not Persians. They're Aziri Turks. So the religious institution in Iran is run by Turks. So there is a great deal of uh, uh, closeness between the two. Let's not forget Ezekiel 38. Uh, Gog, be a guard for them. People told me that's Russia. Russia will guard Libya and, 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 and Sudan. Uh, and, and, what are you talking about? I said, Turkey will guard Iran. Guess who guarded Iran when, when the nuclear issue came up? Wasn't it Turkey that says we're going to take care of the uranium, we're going to put it in Brazil? Wasn't it Turkey that threatened Israel? If you do anything against uh, Iran, we will not stand by. Isn't it Turkey that's putting its armada on the Mediterranean, threatening Israel and threatening Greece? Is it, Tur is it not Turkey that is sending flotillas to Israel? Is it not Turkey? What were we saying for 15 years to the American people? And isn't the American people putting wax in their ears and not listening? Yeah, that, that's, we, <laughs> I, I've been talking about this all month. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. Well, we've only been able to scratch the surface. As you can see and hear, this is a very complex uh, topic, but we need to understand the times we live in. Uh, that's why I'm urging you to get this book, uh, God's War on Terror, Islam, Prophecy, and the Bible. Uh, we've just scratched the surface. We're talking about over four, almost 500 pages of it's material. 700 so pages. We made the font smaller because they told me uh, <laughs> Americans won't read 700 pages. So I said, I yeah, will, I will read 500, yeah. right? <laughs> and I'm coupling it. I'm... <laughs> I'm also including it with a, um, a much easier to read book, A Rabbi Looks at the Last Days. Uh, I don't think they conflict that much, actually, Wally. Uh, I think uh, you need to get these books so you understand the times we live in. Last question for you, how close are we to the end? We've, uh, well, uh, the problem with saying, well, uh, Erdogan of Turkey could be the Antichrist, well, there's a problem with that. We don't know. The reason we don't know is because Daniel chapter 7 verse 24 this 10 kings have to rise first and then the 11th one will be the one so we're seeing Tunisia Libya Egypt begin to count there will be 10 will arise from that Greco-Roman it's not really Roman it's not really Greco it's Greco-Romano really combined together those will arise and we see those arising then as the, the final one will come after that so it could be the next one in the uh, Turkish government. Well, until he returns, we'll keep having you back on to give us updates. Uh, thank you so much, Waleed, for you being bet. back. Waleed Shubat, everybody.